Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Jump Game. In this question, we are given an integer array nums and we are initially positioned at the array's first index and each element in the array represent the maximum jump that we can take from that particular position. Now we need to return true if only we can reach the last index or false otherwise. In the first example, we can see that we can take a jump from the 0th index to the first index and then from the first index we can jump 3 steps to the last index and hence we return true. And in the second example we cannot reach the last index so we return false. Below are the constraints given with the particular problem. Now let's first see what the problem is all about and how we can solve this. So as we saw that we had this as the initial array given to us. So what this array represent? Let's first discuss that. The question says that we are standing at the 0th index. In this case, the index 0 has the value 2. Now what this particular value 2 represent? It means that we can make at most 2 jumps from this particular index. So the value 3 means that from the index 1 where the value is 3, we can make at most 3 jumps. Now the question states that we are at the 0th index and we need to reach the last index in this particular array. If we can reach the last index we will return true otherwise we will return false. So let's start with what we can do when we are at the 0th index. As we saw we can jump at most 2 steps from this particular index. We can either jump to index 1 or index 2. And for the index 1 we have value as 3 so we can jump at most 3 steps from this particular index 1. As given the explanation we also see that if we jump from 0th index to 1st index using only one jump and then jump 3 steps from the index 1 to the last index we have reached the last index and we need to just return true in this case as we were able to reach the last index. We need not to care about how many steps we took or will it be the minimum steps. We just need to make sure that we reach the last index or not. This makes this question easier to solve. So when we are at the index 0, we saw that we can make at most 2 jumps. And we are only concerned about the maximum jumps that we can take from any particular index. In this case, we take 2 jumps. So, at most from the index 0 we can reach the index 2 and this becomes the maximum length or the maximum index that we can reach starting from the index 0. Now we move to the next index and see that from there we can jump 3 steps. Now this particular index that is index 1 where the value 3 reside is before the maximum jump that we took earlier. That means during the process if we were to take a different amount of steps we could have landed on the index 1 and so we can use the jumps that are on this index 1 which is 3 and move further. That means we can have 3 jumps from the index 1 and reach the index 4. So we then update the max to this particular index. Now. As we have reached the last index, we can here only have a check which says if we have reached the last index then we can return true. We need not to go further than this but just to make this approach more clear we will iterate through every index for now. Now we reach the index 2 wherein the value is 1 and we see that we can make one jump to it. Now the jump that is the index plus the maximum jump that we can take from this particular index is still less than the maximum value that we have already achieved. So there is no point in making that jump or using this particular jump. So we will move ahead. Again the same condition happens and we again move ahead. On the last index we see that there is a jump of 4 that we can make. So we can make this jump because the maximum in the current index are the same and we make the jump. No doubt we land outside the array but that only signifies that we can reach the last index as well. So in this case it is possible to reach the last index. 
Now, there are some conditions that we have, might have missed over here, which we will cover in the next example. So, the next example is 32104, which is the second example given in the problem itself. We apply the same logic over here and from the index 0, we make a jump of 3 as the value at this particular index is 3. So we make that jump and reach the index 3. Now we continue forward and check if we can reach any index further than this maximum index that we have. We were not able to reach that. And now we come at the index 4. Now at this particular case, we see that the current index from which we need to make the jump is greater than the maximum index that we could have reached from all the past indexes in the array or by making all the past jumps from the values present in the array before this particular index. So there is no way that we could have landed on this particular current index whose value is 4. Hence we won't be taking into consideration this index. And since we cannot reach this particular index, there is no way that we can reach the last index because we are stuck at this index 3. So in this case, it is not possible for us to reach the last index and hence we return false, which matches with what the result is shown in the problem itself. Now you can pause this video over here and try to solve this problem on your own with the explanation that we just discussed. And if you face an issue, you can continue forward looking at how we can code this particular approach. So now it's time to code this particular approach. We'll talk about the basic exit condition that we can have. So if the length of the array is one, as we can see that it can be one, then there is no point in doing any of the calculation. We can directly return true. So let's take the length in a variable. And now if the length is one, we can directly return true. Now we need to know the maximum jump that we can make. So initially the maximum index that we can reach is zero index. And now we will start off from this zeroth index and iterate on the array. Now, if the maximum value is greater than or equals to the current index, then only we will be proceeding further with this for loop. Otherwise, there is no way that we can reach the last index. So we can directly return false in this case. We need not to go to the last index for the iteration. We just need to go to the second last element. Now, the condition that we need to check over here is if the max is smaller than the current index plus the value present at this index. If that is the case, we'll update the max to this particular index. Plus, if you do not want a if over here, you can always use math.maximum for that. Now, the condition that if anywhere we have already reached or surpassed n minus one, we need to return true. There is no point in going further than that. And this code covers up the conditions. Let's recheck. For the length one, we are returning true. We are going from zero to n minus two. If and only if the maximum is greater than or equals to index. Otherwise, there is no point in going ahead. The index is getting incremented. We are checking if the max is smaller than index plus the value at this particular index then we update the max. If the max value anywhere reaches beyond n minus one or n minus one, we return true. Otherwise we know that we cannot reach it and we simply return false. So now let's try to run this code for all the sample test cases. So it is successful. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. As we can see the time complexity over here is O of n as we are doing an iteration to zero to n minus one. Well, the space complexity over here is O of 1. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.